just like that day. 
most smooth sailing experience I've ever had with edibles, especially homemade edibles. Anyways, <laughs> they're kicking in, and I remember at a certain point, I was seeing in front of 
us. We can barely make out their outlines, but we know it's two guys. They stood there just staring at us from afar. They would stare at us for like a minute, then they would look at each other and talk. Couldn't hear what they were saying though. They did that for about 10 minutes. My friend and I just sat there not saying a word. We were so stoned we didn't care. The ocean breeze and the stars and ocean were really fucking with them feels. <laughs> All of a sudden the two guys start walking towards us really slowly and making hand gestures. They were making sounds but we couldn't make out the words. The whole time me and my boy are just looking at them. Finally I say, yo man, I know I'm pretty baked, but do you see those two dudes walking up to us, or am I just tripping? He replies, oh shit, you see them too? I thought I was seeing shit, that's why I didn't say anything. By this time, they were about 15 feet from us. I can now clearly see and hear what they are doing. These two dudes thought my friend and I were two stray dogs sitting on the beach. They were patting their thighs and saying, Come here, boy. Come on, boy. They would start whistling and saying, Come here. It took me about 20 seconds to muster up a, What the fuck are you doing? And they ran off. I think we laughed for about 15 minutes after we grasped the whole situation. Now that, that was pretty good. <laughs> I'm just going to take a sip of water really quick. The next story. Get ready if you, uh, if you have the munchies, I would suggest you go get something right now, <laughs> because this next one might make you hungry. After taking a few hits with my brother, uh, sorry, let me, let me go back. The story begins with, I desperately needed a Taco Bell Baja Blast Freeze. After taking a few hits with my brother, this Baja Blast became the whole reason of my existence. After elaborating on about the true godliness of this drink for a good ten minutes, my brother got the hint and started up the spaceship, and we were off on our quest. In high time, the quest took about a couple of years, but it was definitely worth it so that I would be able to quench an unquenchable thirst. As we arrived at the drive through precisely at 1.23 a.m., the time seemed so important for forgotten or high reasons. We panicked because we forgot the reason of our quest. But then, bam, in all its undeniable glory, behold, the Baja Blast mocking us in its neon-lighted form. I grasped at the air, but I knew in due time it would be really in my hands, tangible and beautiful. Fixated on the sign so much, it ended up being the only thing we ordered. Pay attention to this, this detail's important. So, as we pull up to the next stop to retrieve our order, a red-eyed, spaced-out clerk handed us the drink, and in the brief moment of eye contact, we both understood our current states. And then the clerk said the one thing I'll probably never forget, especially when ordering drive through Do you want some sauce with that? The clerk was still holding and handing us the drink when he said that. A moment passed, and we all just started dying of laughter, including the clerk, as we drove away. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the Baja Blast. <laughs> the Baja Blast quest. Alright, next one. One morning, I was getting picked up by my uncle for a ride to the airport at like 5.45. 
I was very tired, so I just hobbled into the first car I saw on the street, which happened to be the same color and basic shape as my uncle's. I get in the passenger seat, and as my brain starts to articulate the oddly powerful smell of some potent weed, I look over and see some dude staring at me in disbelief. He was not my uncle. It was pretty funny. He was obviously freaked out and super high. I just got out without saying a word and walked back into the building I was in. I don't know what I would do in that situation if someone just hopped in my car and I was high and then they just left. <laughs> That's a little odd. I don't know what I would do. <laughs> Next up, a couple of my friends were smoking and having a good time. Then we got the eventual munchies and decided to some pizza. 20 minutes later, the pizza guy calls my phone and asks me to come outside. I came outside and he hands me the pizza and says, that'll be $15. I nodded back to him and said, yep, and stared at him with my red eyes for a solid 30 seconds until he repeated, $15 is your total realizing that I was supposed to pay him, I got the highest smile and started to giggle and took out my wallet. For some reason, that required the use of both hands, and the pizza fell to the ground. Thank you, Cardboard, for saving pizza, bro. <laughs> I would hate that. <laughs> I'd be so scared of the box opening or something. I mean, I know they didn't realize it at the time, but still, that's too good. <laughs> Next up, me and my friend were high as fuck, so we wanted some McDonald's. We're driving there talking about what we're gonna get. I drive up to the drive through box, look at the menu, look over to my friend. Dude, we're at fucking Wendy's. <laughs> I don't even know how you do that. <laughs> That's hilarious. But next story. One time when I was high, I got pulled over and four sheriffs handcuffed me, searched my car without asking, and after an hour and a half didn't find anything. I got back in my car, found a roach in the cup holder, sparked it off, sorry, sparked it up, and rode off into the sunset. <laughs> that sounds like a beautiful ending. <laughs> Next up for you. I shit you not, I saw the aura of objects. Everything was neutral except the sunroof to my car. Bitch was evil. 10 out of 10 would recommend. <laughs> Bitch was evil. 10 out of 10 would recommend. still interested, of course. So my friends and I start driving around, smoking a little, just chilling to some music. You know, the usual. I'm driving, obviously, and at the end of our smoke session, I was so gone, out of my mind. We pull up to a red light, and I'm just sitting there, waiting for it to turn green. About 45 seconds goes by until one of my friends says, go. I'm obviously not going to break driving laws as well, so I reply, I have to wait for it to turn green. Dude, it's a stop sign. I ended up sitting at a stop sign waiting for it to turn green after about a minute. <laughs> okay, I've got a funny story. <laughs> I wasn't high at all this actually happened to me a couple months ago. I was driving and the producer was the passenger. We were driving, I don't know where, but we had to go to a specific highway. I know my way around town, so, you know, I'm not using a GPS or anything. I'm sober as 
messed up, so she came back to my table to switch the plates. There were probably three bites left of that pulled pork sandwich by the time she got there. <laughs> Sorry, that one made me giggle a lot. <laughs> That's good. Alright. Worst slash best idea ever was to get baked before a funeral mass for someone I didn't know. I'm an atheist but grew up Catholic. I was there for moral support and the person I was going with wanted to calm down. So we got super baked, went in, and tried to sit in the very back. Since they were family, we were ushered to the front. No big deal, I'll just sit here and stare at my hands in my lap. Mass starts. It's 100% in Latin. For the first 10 plus minutes, I felt like I was in a horror movie. <laughs> some more for you. One night, when I was higher than usual, me and my buddies were playing Modern Warfare on the PS3. We were in almost complete silence for like a half hour, when suddenly I looked down at my controller, back up to the screen, and said, wait, so this isn't Halo. <laughs> Next one for you. One time, when I was high, I saw blood clots in my boo and thought I had a terrible case of ass cancer. Drove myself to the hospital. Doctor spends a while running tests, but after about two hours, I had to sheepishly explain to him that I had eaten a lot of sun-dried tomatoes the night before and that I was probably actually fine. Well, <laughs> that was amazing. So I say, hey man, we 
we have three blunts left. Let's just go smoke and fuck the club. He agrees, so we drive the hour and a half back to his house. Sitting in my truck, we smoke two more Rillos. The next thing I know, it's 6.30 in the morning. My radio is still playing, but the truck isn't running. I wake up my friend and ask him what happened. He said we both passed out in his driveway. Well, after some smoking, some dank shit, I was starving, so I said I could go for some breakfast. Let's go to Waffle House. Luckily, my truck started right up and we had one more Rillo left, which we smoked on the way to Waffle House. So we munched the fuck down at Waffle House at 7 in the morning. The Grand Slam is fucking awesome. <laughs> what a way to end this drive.